At the Federal Teaching Hospital in Gombe are commemorating the World Hand Hygiene Day with a training and awareness program. This year's theme is Healthcare Quality and Safety Culture. Correspondent Larry Adeyemi reports. From a meeting with all the principal officers in the teaching hospital to departmental inspection, then to a training conference, the Federal Teaching Hospital Gombe wants to break the chain of transmission of infections. With recent experience from coronavirus and loss of fever, the hospital is conscious of hygiene more than ever. If actually you look at the way diseases have been transmitted, you know, from one point to the other, from one person to the other, usually there must be a medium. And hands have actually found to be one of the very easy medium to actually transmit disease from one person to another. A major pillar in infection prevention and control is hand hygiene because the hands carry or serve as the vehicles through which microorganisms that are disease causing are moved from one point to the other, from one patient to the other. Although prime focus was given to patients and their relatives, the medical center wants to use this one-day event to strengthen its operational structure and policy. The chief medical director says the approach as a perfect balance of policy, personnel and infrastructure. And we are training and retraining our staff from doctors, nurses, uh, medical laboratory scientists, physiotherapists, all the healthcare givers in the hospital. And at the same time also for quality assurance, for quality to be sure that your patients and patients' relatives are actually satisfied, you must hear from them. The Federal Teaching Hospital Gombe is at the forefront of managing emergencies and outbreak of diseases for the estimated 30 million people that reside in the Northeast region. The Chief Medical Director of the facility explains that commemorating the World Hyg and Hygiene Day and sensitizing his staff is not just important for the patients but also for the caregivers themselves. Landry Adeyemi, TVC News, Gombe. And it's day two of the protest embarked upon by students of the University of Benin over the industrial action by ASO. The protesting students say the only way to end the incessant strike is for federal government to prioritize the education sector. The students who blocked major roads in protest for several hours displayed their cooking and football dexterity on the road, as well as received lectures. Well, they are calling on federal government to reconsider or rather consider the plight of students by urgently meeting the demand of the union to enable them to return to school. As I'm talking to you now, jam is starting exam by six. They are going to remit money to federal government. Where are all those money going to? Our, our, our institution is dilapidating. We don't have a well-equipped laboratory, nothing. So I want to appeal to the federal government, any coming problem, anything you want to do, Invest in the educational sector, and you can see the grievances. This is my of welfare is in 400 level, 500 level, 500 level, seven years, since seven years, 500 level. Yes. With him graduates. When I was at home, election is coming again. We want to go back to our classroom. We are not hoodlums. We are not tarts. We are, we are not, we are not, we are not talks. We are not here to cause chaos. All we want is to go back to school. All we want is to go back to our classroom. That's what we want. And we are calling on all relevant authorities the Union Labour Congress and all other unions to support us in the struggle to make sure that Nigerian students in public university go back to school. We will keep agitating till our voices are heard. It is so sad that without agitation, these people will not listen to us. A governor of a state named Withheld posted the other day congratulating his child graduating from a school abroad in the UK. We all saw it from our houses and we are pained. And the schools that these people attend abroad are public universities. But our public universities here are trash. So we are only crying as usual for our voices to be heard. And if you would testify yesterday, the number was not up to this. Tomorrow, it will be worse. So let them answer us and answer us fast. We from that in Bayelsa State, the natives of IMR community are seeking help over the loss of land and buildings to coastal erosion. 
They were also demanding immediate action by government at all levels towards the completion of the abandoned shoreline protection contract in the community. There is more in this report. The Yama Kingdom is said to be as old as the 17th century and remains one of the three clan headquarters in the Ogbia Council area. The once boisterous town is now a shadow of itself as over 500 historical structures and more than a kilometer expanse of land have been washed away by erosion. Structures such as a church building, a police post, a landing jetty are no longer usable by the community. Hoisting placards to drive home their grievances, the natives are protesting against the lack of commitment on the part of the government. This side that you are seeing is a new, a new, a new site. The old original Anyama has been eroded away long, long ago. Land here is now very expensive and costly as a result of lack of land because it has eroded all the land. The property that have been eroded away, government has not come back to rebuild this property. Coastal relations is approved yet. It has been abandoned. Good luck awarded the, the, the contract to Dragon International. We were told that they had the money. They didn't come. The day that this erosion cut our house, if not God is looking after me and my children, maybe some of my children will fall down and lost in the river. A few meters away from Ayama is the Ayakuro community, where a shoreline protection contract awarded by the Niger Delta Development Commission appears abandoned in 2011. Environmentalists believe that only immediate legislative and executive action will solve the issue. The Environmental Rights Action has called for the establishment of a flood and erosion commission in Bayelsa State, whereby maybe 1 or 2 percent of the 13 percent derivation should have been directed to this commission. And the, the, the commission should have been empowered by law to collaborate with other federal interventionist agencies and international development partners to deal with such issues. We are so disappointed about abandoned shore protection uh, uh, job by NDDC. This place was giving contract. You are not even seeing the pillars. In some community, you see the pillars. Here, nothing. The establishment of a flawed and erosion commission with adequate funding is believed to be one of the ways to curb its effect. Joseph Kunde. CVC News, I am.